Hey guys, welcome back. It's Felicia and Rowena. And we're back today with a topic that you all love to learn about, love to ask questions about, and it's chemical exfoliation. And we totally get it. It's one of those things that can be a little confusing to get into at the beginning because there are all these different percentages, different type of acids and different products, and you're just left like, what? So today we're bringing you guys a video all about the basics of chemical exfoliating sponsored by Bliss to share with you what you need to know about AJs, BHAs, and even PHAs <laughs> and how they work in our skincare products like exfoliating pads. If you haven't got on the chemical exfoliating train yet, what it does is increase cell turnover to renew fresh baby skin in a very gentle way, which then helps with unclogged pores and helping with blackheads and whiteheads. And when we get facials, the facialist tells us this all the time. If you don't shed that dead skin, nothing can seep in. And personally, I find it helps so much with texture and overall brightness, especially especially when there's like unevenness going on. And chemical exfoliants are definitely one of our favorite ingredients to incorporate in our skincare routine, like every day, every week, because it's just like, bing bing. It makes you bing bing. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll be talking all about chemical exfoliants, AKA how to build up your skin tolerance to incorporate them into your skincare routine. And also the major do's and don'ts of using these ingredients so that we don't accidentally overdo it. And also share some important tips for different skin types. <laughs> Chemical exfoliants refer to naturally derived acids, also known as AHA, alpha hydroxy acid, or BHA, beta hydroxy acid, and even PHA, polyhydroxy acid, which is more of an up and coming acid in the skincare world. Mm -hmm. And what they do is, as we said, remove the dead skin that builds up on the very surface layer of our epidermis. And this happens because every around 28 to 30 days, our skin naturally regenerates itself. But sometimes when we're not like properly clean, cleansing or because it's summer and we produce a lot of sebum and sweat and like nasty grime on our face, this dead skin gets trapped in with all the other nasties, which then leads to breakouts. Breakouts! <laughs> By using chemical exfoliants, you're helping your skin to unstick and get rid of that layer of dead skin. And if you think about it, whenever you're lifting away dead skin, it's revealing newer skin underneath. So it's essentially cleaning out and decongesting the pores, smoothing out any textural patches, and naturally helping fresh skin to come through to give off a brighter complexion. See why we love it? Now that we're all on the same page, let's dive deeper into AJs. AJs. <laughs> As we just mentioned, AJs stand for alpha hydroxy acid and there are a few different types of AHAs you've probably all heard about at some point. These include glycolic acid, lactic acid, mandelic acid, citric acid, tartaric acid. These are water soluble acids and derive from different fruits or even milk. And glycolic acid is probably the most well known like holy grail of chemical exfoliants in skincare and we're gonna go in depth about how this one works in just a bit but especially because it can help with texture smoothing the skin Skin, and it's the smallest of the molecular sizes within the AJs. So that just means it can like sink down further. And glycolic acid is normally derived from sugar canes. Then there's lactic acid, which is derived from sour milk. Mmm, yum. Yes. <laughs> Fun fact is that it's the process when the lactose from milk ferments and becomes lactic acid. Ta-da! <laughs> but don't worry, your toners and serums don't actually contain sour milk because that will be kind of nasty. That would be nasty. Just a little. I don't know, okay, like if apple cider vinegar smell would be worse yeah. or sour milk on the face would be worse. Anything for beauty, right? <laughs> and then there's malic acid, which is derived from apples. And an apple a day keeps breakouts away. <laughs> and we also tried, well, I did in the Ling Skincare Facial. She started off with that apple malic peel yeah. and it was like really gentle and great for sensitive skin. And that's the thing with these acids. It sounds really scary, but it's actually very gentle. And that just helped with like resurfacing the dead skin so that everything she put on later could sink in. Next, there's citric acid and as suggested by the name, it's from citrus fruits and tartaric acid comes from grapes. So Caudalie's entire line is based off of grapes and you'll definitely find it in products like that. So you can see, although they're acids, they actually come from natural sources to gently buff away that skin without needing to 
to tug and scrub, which is why we think it's a really great and gentle way to reveal that baby soft layer that we all want, but sometimes can't get. <laughs> then there's the BHA or beta hydroxy acid, which we probably all know of as salicylic acid. BHA is different to AHA in that it's oil soluble, which means it can reach past the teeny tiny hair follicles on our face and deep into the oil glands where AHAs can't pass and dissolve the sebum and dead skin that could be stuck deep down in the crevices of our pores. And we all know that happens. And for this reason alone, that's why you'll see a lot of salicylic acid in acne products because of this point. Then there's also PHA, which isn't as talked about compared to HA and BHA, but we have some insights that tell us that this is the next generation AHA because it works more gently on the skin because of its larger molecular size. PHA stands for polyhydroxy acids, but if you've seen these three ingredients, bing, 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 in your skincare, this is also essentially PHA. And the major benefit of having a larger molecular size compared to the other AHAs is that it won't cause photoaging which is that hypersensitivity your skin can get from the sun. Because you're shedding all that dead skin, there's less protection. And then when the sun or the UV rays hits it, it essentially burns your skin, taking you <laughs> back to square one and undoing everything that you like spent all this money but on. We don't want that. I don't want to want <laughs> No. That. So it's important to keep your skin moisturized and protected with sunscreen so that you are safe. So this is a great option for those of you whose skin can't handle other chemical exfoliating acids. Mm -hmm. Now that we know all about these magical acids, we're all probably wanting to get on this train and start splashing it all over our face. But we know there are quite a few questions when it comes to how to really use it and how to maximize its effectiveness. Because as you probably might have noticed, they come in so many different products everywhere from your toners to serums, moisturizers, even face masks, even your cleansers. And we have a video talking all about the different ways to use them in those specific products. So you can check that out. But today we're going to share with you guys how to use them in the form of exfoliating pads because we didn't get to mention it in our previous video. And it's something that hardly gets enough attention. So basically, they're thin circular shaped pads and are pre-soaked in exfoliating acid solution and formulated with other soothing ingredients. And the pads are often made with a cotton with those subtle grooves and textures. And you'll find some of them have different textures on both sides. One of them is like a more coarse like mesh material. And then and you flip it on the other side and it's like a smooth bump. And that's just kind of like step one, step two. And of course, different brands will formulate different percentages of chemical exfoliants in the formula that it's soaked in. A lot of the questions are like, should I use my toner and how much should I put on my pad? And after the toner, can I use the serum? So because it's already in a formula, you don't have to think about how much you should be putting on your cotton pad or how often to use because usually the packaging will tell you and you just follow that. So the one that we've been recently using are the Bliss Incredipeel Glycolic Peel Pads and we have them here. Ding! What I like about these compared to the other ones that I've used, they're individually wrapped, which makes it way more sanitary because we all know that air and you know heat can really change the structure of like the formula and stuff. And because they're individually wrapped, they don't dry out because a lot of the ones that are in the like little tubs, tub, the ones on the top always dry out and then you're left with squidgy pads on the bottom. So the first time I used it, I was like, oh my gosh, there's so much of that toner serum yeah. in the pad. So I actually go over my entire face and also down the neck and then back on my face, or even the decolletage. <laughs> because that's also like a sign of age, so you're like exfoliating the chest. And 10% glycolic acid is what's suggested as the kind of that sweet spot of percentage using it at home. Whereas if you go any higher, it's kind of like if you were to get an intense peel at a facialist. So instead of like high concentration at the facialist, you do it two to three times on a weekly basis with a much more sensitive formula. Not only is there glycolic acid, there's also vitamin E, calendula extract, licorice extract, and it's like soothing ingredients to help balance out the exfoliation. The could be intensity of mm. glycolic acid. Mm -hmm. yeah. And there's also mm -hmm. witch hazel in there, which is also helps to control oils. So for those of you who have like acne prone, 
oily skin, or an obviously combination, it actually helps a lot in balancing out all those like pores. I feel like the pores and especially blackheads, you know how sometimes if you haven't extracted for a while, your pores are so filled and they actually, there's bump bulge. Yeah. <laughs> so AHAs, especially glycolic acid, because it has that smaller molecular size, really helps to sink down and like break it apart so that it makes like other products apply better and also breaks down the nasty dead skin that makes it look bumpy. Yeah. So I start from like the nose, the cheeks, and then the forehead. I'm like, oh yeah, this feels so good. And, and then there's like, still so much product. Yeah. And then I go like down and like really get my neck because I'm starting to feel like my neck is, <laughs> is changing texture as I age. So I really don't want to leave that out. And then by the time I finish that, like the face dried a little yeah. bit and then I was like, go over again because I love chemical experience. <laughs> then what did you do? I just did layers on my face. Oh yeah. And then I didn't think about my neck, but I think mm. now I'm gonna do layers on my face and then go down to the neck. Every brand has its own pad. So this one, how would you describe it? It's a patented micro sponge actually. Yeah. And it's got the encapsulated glycolic acid. It's controlling the amount that's actually spread onto your skin overnight. Mm. And they do suggest that you only use this at night because it resurfaces, yeah. yeah. Tingling is another question that comes up a lot when it comes to chemical exfoliants. Mm. So how do you tell that it's burning or tingling because you don't want burning. I think tingly usually goes away after 30 seconds. Yeah. It's like a gentle, who I feel like there's like little ants dancing on yeah, my face. Yeah, it's right? like if the ants It's like a like, gentle, like, uh -huh. oh, I feel something going on, but yeah. then it's not like, oh my God, it hurts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So when it's burning, you're just like, <laughs> like there's fire ants like stomping on my face. Yeah. So like that's where it comes down to everyone should be very aware of your own skin. But if there is kind of tingling, kind of like pins and needles on the yeah. face as well, it could also be like your skin needs time to adjust to the glycolic acid, especially at a percentage if you've never used 10% yeah. before because they also have like 5%, 3%. And what you wanna do is just keep consistent with using chemical exfoliants until that tingling will just be like nothing. We would probably say if you're gonna be outside for a really long amount of time the next day, try to use this on a day where you're not going to be so exposed because if you are a little bit more sensitive, it could be a little irritating. So yeah, just to each your own, try it out. Different people will react differently, of course, so make sure with any chemical exfoliant, just start slow and work your way up. Because it's rapidly resurfacing the skin, it actually helps to calm your pimples at a much quicker rate. So if you're dealing with breakouts, maybe that's something to keep in mind. And then you can get them at like Target for $20. Let's get into some do's and don'ts of chemical exfoliation for specific skin types. But first, let's clean up our room. Ready? <laughs> if only my room could actually be cleaned <laughs> that quickly. <laughs> All right, here are some do's. Hydrate and moisturize. Glycolic acid and any other chemical exfoliator can theoretically dry out the skin. Mm -hmm. To counter that, look for products that contain moisturizing ingredients, which will help soothe the acid side effects and instead help to support the process. So always remember to follow up with the very hydrating moisturizer. Our skin is naturally made up of lipids and fats and cholesterols to keep it moisturized and youthful. So it's a huge responsibility to restore all that moisture, especially when the skin is so fresh. The newborn baby is crying for help and this step will help to reduce any of the like irritating effects that you might get. And if you want to take the guesswork out of like, will it be too much if I mix in a serum with another AHA, then just completely skip serum and go straight to a really soothing moisturizer. One that even has like, it's very simple with not a ton of different fancy yeah. active ingredients. Another do is check the concentrations. And this one's especially important because sometimes I think when we like something, we think it's doing a good thing for our skin. And the more that we just wanna like splash that all over, but it definitely doesn't work that way because when it comes to using chemical exfoliants, the higher isn't always better. General rule of thumb is to start low and work your way up when starting out. Then once you know how it works, you can then start using it more frequently in the week. Be consistent with SPF. As we mentioned before, 
before, your skin just worked overnight to help shed itself of its old dead skin cells and you can leave your skin somewhat in a very sensitive state, especially when it's exposed to sunlight. It's like if you freshly just like shed a whole layer of skin, <laughs> you'd be like this, I'm naked. So you wanna really protect yourself. Definitely make sure you apply sunscreen before heading outdoors the following morning. I mean, you should apply sunscreen anyway, mm. any day. Okay, now some don'ts. Bam, bam. Don't wow. over exfoliate. And we talk about this all the time, like we, just had a video about over exfoliation and compromising your skin barrier. So for those of you who enjoy using things like physical exfoliating brushes or you know just any sort of tool that helps cleanse, you might want to set this aside if you choose chemical exfoliants and if you see that your skin is getting a little raw. You know, like either or it's a little it's red, taut and yeah. shiny. Any sort of irritation, maybe even like rosacea is coming up or flaring up. You might want to put the physical exfoliators and scrubs aside. And one way to know if it's irritated is if there's extra dryness, there's broken blood vessels, there's increased sensitivity. And like when you use products that you used to use before, they start stinging, then that's like a telltale sign. Don't use on sensitive skin. If you're currently experiencing inflamed, crack, flaking, or any open wounds, we suggest you pause using any chemical exfoliants until the skin barrier has had time to heal back to normal because even if the products are usually good for you when your skin is already irritated the product won't be able to absorb the way that they're designed to be absorbed mm -hmm. so during these times you want to stick to the most simple ingredients and not try to be fancy and experimental because your skin will not like it few more notes to keep in mind patience is key when it comes to seeing results with acids for some people you'll be able to see results within a week like felicia or even a day as some people have said in their reviews while others might not experience much change until closer to a month but if all goes well you will for sure notice a brightened a radiant and a clear complexion and this is because all of our skin types and skin conditions are always changing we're in different environments we have different lifestyles and products that we're using and we're always switching things up the best advice we can give you on top of what we already talked about for chemical exfoliants is to use it as often as your skin can tolerate it really get to know your skin and you'll be able to make natural changes in your routine to chop and change. And then probably most importantly, always remember that your habits and lifestyle choices have most of the power to determine whether your skin is acting up or it's really good. You know how sometimes you're like feeling good, you're in a good space, your mental space, and like you're just glowing. <laughs> it's like that pregnancy glow without being <laughs> pregnant. <laughs> and that all has to do with internal things. So hydrate and drink enough water so that your organs can naturally help you detox from the inside. Our body is a machine that just does its own thing if it's loved, right? Yeah. And then get enough sleep because sleep is probably one of another huge factor that really affects not just the color of our skin, but the texture of it. You know how like when we don't sleep, it's very dull. It's like every like night. Corpse. And for the more sensitive skin types, learn the foods that are causing your breakouts. And in general, try to reduce the amount of sugar you consume in your diet because sugar really is a silent killer when it comes to healthy skin. It won't affect everyone the same, but just be wary of your own skin and habits. And thank you Bliss again for letting us share with you guys all about chemical exfoliants one of our favorite topics to talk about and something that you guys are all curious about. And make sure if you're interested in trying out chemical exfoliating pads that you check out the Bliss Incredipeels because they're super affordable and it's a great way to get into chemical exfoliants without being confused. And as always, products are linked down below. You can also grab the Incredipeel at Ulta and even Target. Thank you guys so much for watching and we'll see you in the next video.